From the News Channel 5 Network, this is Inside Politics. Hello everyone, I'm News Channel 5's political analyst, Pat Nolan. Welcome to Inside Politics. Today we once again continue our conversations with those who would be our next governor. Our guest this week is State House Minority Leader Craig Fitzhugh. He's running for governor in the Democratic primary on August 2nd. Leader Fitzhugh, welcome back to Inside Politics. Good to have you back Thanks, again. Thanks, Pat. Good to see you. Now, we're beginning all these interviews with gubernatorial candidates with questions we, we ask all of them. Um, the first question is pretty simple, but it's perhaps the most important question that you'll face as a candidate. Why are you running for governor? It's, it's not a simple answer for me. I've been in politics in the General Assembly for 24 years and have had a good run. So you should know better to run for something. <laughs> yes, absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> and there's a lot of difference between running in three counties and 95, I tell you. But I guess the bottom line is I just sort of, I, I looked at my grandchildren and I said, you know, I'm not so sure their opportunities will be as good as mine. I'm, I mean, I'm a rural guy, first person in my family to go to college, public school guy, so I, I've had a great life. But my body of work was such that I just thought that I had something more to offer. So that's why I'm in. As you've gone across the state, have you been able to identify what the top three issues are that are facing Tennesseans? Yes, pretty easily, Pat. I, I think they're, they're, they are three. They are education, they are health care, and jobs and related things like infrastructure and, and, and uh, the, the like. So those are the three that uh, I think Tennesseans uh, are most concerned about. And if we can do something about, we'll make all Tennesseans lives better. Can you briefly mention what you'll do to take an address to address immediately those three areas you're talking about? I, th I think so. Education, I've become, I think early childhood is the key. And I think if we can uh, get a child to read at grade level by the third grade, if that child can learn to read by the third grade, they can read to learn. So after statewide pre-K. Yes, it, it, and and even more early early reading and that type of thing. That statewide pre-K is expensive, but I think we need to start working toward that. Expand health care. Uh, yes, of course. You, You've you, talked a lot about yes, that. Yes, yes, and, and it's the first thing we have to do. And we we can do other things with prescription drugs and and uh, reimbursements on our ten care and things like that. So yes. And your third issue was. Jobs, it's jobs. Economic? It's jobs. You know, we, we've but got unemployment's a, as low as it's ever been in Tennessee. It, it is, Pat. It, it, it's it really not a is. jobs issue per se. It's the kind of jobs. It is because we have the most people in the country per capita working at minimum wage in Tennessee. Not much American dream there. So, uh, what programs or policies under this current administration, Governor Bill Haslam, might you change or try to rescind if you come in office? Well, I would certainly try to continue what he tried to do with uh, with Medicaid expansion. Uh, I think some of the the uh, uh, the, the press toward privatization of government services is not a good thing and, and I would I would not press that I would not penalize students in higher education if they didn't meet a certain time standard for getting their degree which he wants to do and then you know the higher education the 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 new boards and all that we need to look at that especially in regard to UT because you I, think perhaps the board is too small now or well I think so not I drawn mean, correctly there's just seven and none of them have any experience so I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing uh, what this governor will do and and, and what the next governor can do. The legislature and the governor this past term, this past year, earlier this year, passed an opioids uh, program. Yes. Uh, they yeah. One thing they've done is limit the, num the amount of prescription drugs you can get for an opioid. Uh, did they set the number right? Is this going to work? Well, we don't know. We don't know. There are legitimate reasons for these drugs, for sure, and we're the, the most prescribed state in the nation, but we'll have to see. I think, it, I think it's a start. I think a lot of it comes from the manufacturers and the prescribers, so we have to work on that, but we also have to work on education. We have to work on the bad stuff that's on the black market, and we have to work on treatment. The treatment in particular, the governor put $30 million in, and some of that was state money, some of it's federal money, but $30 million for the amount of problem that we've got in Tennessee does doesn't really seem much more than a drop in the bucket. Well, I was going to say drop in the bucket. It's hard to say 30 million is, but some hospitals in our country spend that much on a yearly basis. In terms of K-12 education, a lot of problems with the 10 Ready program where they're yes. trying to, to measure not only what the students learn, but how well the teachers are doing. Do we need to scrap this current program and start back all over again? Well, it, it, we might, Pat. This, this, this has been a disaster. There's no credibility left in this 10 Ready. I've been very vocal about that. The teachers and students want and need to be evaluated, but we're not doing such a great job. We just found out this week at a hearing of government ops uh, through the comptroller that there was no, there was no uh, what do you call it, a, a break? No cyber attack. No cyber attack at all. And, and that was sort of an excuse that I believe came from the contractor. We have to, st we, we, we have to do better than that. You it think may the be contractor himself needs to be replaced? Yes, himself? yes, and, and uh, it looks like uh, he, that contractor is going to try to um, uh, be in the RFP for next time, and I certainly think that we shouldn't let that happen. 
You mentioned earlier the rural areas of the state. They often feel overlooked. You're from a rural part of the state. Agriculture is still our state's largest business, but does it get overlooked? Oh, yes. Rural areas, you know, we just don't have the tax base that other areas have. We don't have the roads that other areas have. Uh, even the 1986 road plan that Governor McWhorter had is not finished yet. So, yes, we, we have some, and, and I know that. I live there, and, and uh, you know, so, so yes, we, we, we need to not forget our rural areas for sure. We talked about unemployment earlier, particularly, I would say, bringing higher paying jobs into those areas and again across the state would be important with all the minimum wage jobs. What's going to be your plan as governor to change that? Well, I think it's all about getting good job training, good post-secondary education, whether it's a four-year degree, a two-year degree, a TCAT diploma, or even some technical and, and specialized training for those 21st century jobs. That's the key. Um, are you surprised as you turn on the TV, and now you started your TV ads as well, that we don't hear a lot about that particular issue about jobs? It's mentioned a little bit about every, everybody, obviously all candidates are for good jobs for Tennesseans, but they talk more about border walls and, and other kind of uh, national issues. Well, there's certainly a problem, Pat, but we, we need to concentrate on Tennessee and Tennesseans, and there are things we can do. That a lot of those border issues, we're not even close to a border, so you know, uh, there's a lot of issues that we can't do anything about from that perspective, but we can about those uh, education issues for and sure. And nobody talks about the fact that we are at the lowest unemployment one way or the other we've ever had. Nobody, the That's Republicans right. themselves don't talk much about Governor Haslam directly. They don't say nice. They don't. They, they don't say anything necessarily really bad about him. But yeah. they don't say for an incumbent that would appear to have some things to talk about for successes. They don't talk no, about no, and not at all. And and he's done some good things. And I, and we've worked. I've worked with him. I, my caucus. We passed the uh, the uh, Improve Act, which was the uh, the roads program. the roads program and the gas tax. The gas tax. That's right. The Democrats did that for for uh, I'm not for Governor Haslam, but it would not have passed without us. As you look, and this is on both sides of the aisle. Are you surprised at all that the candidates don't talk about any more about being I'm a Republican and I'm a Democrat? That used to be what people ran on in this state. Now they the Republicans all talk about who's the best conservative or who's more like Donald Trump. But even on the Democratic websites, I've looked at yours and Mayor Dean's, nobody talks much about being a Democrat. Well, you know, I've, I've just decided <laughs> that I my, my uh, palm card has got it. I'm not scared to be a Democrat, and I'm not, because it's all about people, Pat. That's the essence of being a Democrat from the time that my mother that my mother made me a de Democrat. So, and, and so I've, I've decided, you know what, that's what it's all about. And I'm a Democrat running for the all of Tennessee. Craig Fitzhugh is the Democratic candidate for governor. He's also the state minority leader. Back to continue our conversation with him after this break.